This particular meal would be probably £1.10 per person, and that's for two meals. I'm doing enough so we can have tomorrow as well. For one, it's, it would save on electricity. I've noticed a big difference in the cost of living in Burnley, and it's crazy. The prices are just going out of control. We've cut it down to roughly two meals a day. We don't have a lunch. I think they need to go back to the olden days when they think of how people battled then, because that's exactly what's happening now. Happy Wednesday, everybody. We haven't got any heating as such. It's terribly cold. The boiler's been packed up. That, that became a problem. We're not in a position to be able to just go out and buy a new boiler. My thoughts are that being the age we are, we shouldn't have to be worrying. You know, and it's just another thing to put on your shoulders. I ask myself what people, when you say poverty or the cost of living, what that means to people. I think there's this kind of assumption that that's just about somebody who hasn't got any money, but it actually runs beyond that. This is the parish of St Matthews where I, I work and live. It's a place I love being, but it's, um, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing on the eye, that's for sure. Behind the doors of these houses are some very interesting and challenging lives. People who are not just dealing with financial poverty, but they're dealing with mental health issues, addiction issues. This is a cost of living crisis that's gone on for decades. These are people who have to make a decision that if their toaster packs up, or their children's shoes wear out, they have a choice then, it's do I replace the shoes or do I buy food? Burnley's my home and Burnley made me who I am today. It's a very robust place that's full of very strong people. We deliver free and heavily reduced plumbing and heating services to elderly, vulnerable, disabled, low income and single parent families. Look at that bad boy. You go into properties where people, they don't have central heating or they have not central heating for many years. And when you see stuff like that, it makes you wonder what's going on. Why are these people falling through at the net? The holes in the net are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, we are rough, Jimmy. It just happens. Is it? Yeah, it's not your fault. Don't get me wrong, I'm not penniless, penniless, but if this carries on, we will be. You know what I mean? We will be. Where we used to treat ourselves uh, every six weeks, go out for a bit of a, a meal. You know what I mean? Can't do it now. Thinking of the bills. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. I had a car, got rid of it. The bills, no, because it's part of the cost of living discount that we're giving people. So the money you save on that, you put in your gas and electric. Okay, keep yourself warm. Yeah. Oh. I love this woman, you know that. Yeah, if, you, know. if she wasn't married to you, she'd be mine. I know, all right, all right. <laughs> I'll keep it all right, Jimmy, yeah? I am, I'm good, man, I'm good. This is the Breakfast Club at St Matthew's. They're on sausage butties this morning and uh, they seem to be going down quite well. Certainly in the last probably six months of this year, the need's just gone through the roof and we're seeing more and more people reaching out not just for food, but people who are, who are crying out for warmth. We see people who are asking us now if we can help them with their fuel bills. That's a huge burden for us as a church to try and to carry, is to say, you know, can you pay my gas bill? We're not in a privileged position to do that. But it's a sad indictment on our society that people are, are now turning to churches and charitable organisations to fill that void. My son's 18 and he's got autism. So I've cared for him. I care for my husband as well. I've been here for all my life and everyone sticks together. Because we're all in the same situation. Oh. I have my money coming in, but then it's gone. As soon as that's in, that's going straight back out. Because you need to get your gas, your electric, your shop, water. You've got like about £20 left, wait. You don't get much to here. Price of milk. They have to make a living though, don't they? I'm getting to the stage when I'm shopping, I'm thinking what I'm putting in and then because I only have a certain amount with me so I'm panicking then when I get to it till thinking have I got enough to pay for this shop when you see these homeless people you never know you might be in that situation yourself one day 
Mark is a intelligent, funny, humorous guy. And if you ask Mark where it all went wrong, I think he'd probably say he probably went up too many no entry road signs. Yeah. I report him as a vulnerable adult and, and when we started talking about it, he said, I've got a ca I've got a caravan, you know. I was like, What? I've got a caravan. I made him drive me to it and, and when oh. I saw it it was well, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't take that caravan for scrap. And he was living in it with no water or gas or electric, no sanitation. A landlord was being paid for it, you know, out of Mark's benefits. Did the police ever come? No. Social worker? No, nobody. That's modern day Britain, that, right there. You heard his voice, nobody knew, nobody cared, nobody asked how he was. He could have been dead in there. It, it just renders you speechless. But I have no money for a living. I really have no money for living anymore. It's got that bad. I think I've got a Yorkie bar in my bedroom. That's my entire food. I actually get so tired. Luckily, I'm not brave enough to uh, kill myself. But I do feel like that sometimes. If people don't intervene, he will die. And uh, who will care? I'll care. Will those who feed him his beer in the shop and who buy his uh, shoplifting items care? They won't give a shit, will they? It'll just be another statistic. We've always been middle class. It's the way we brought our children up. But you work for your living and you reap the benefits afterwards. But we're at a stage, I think, that we feel like we're being pushed lower. It's hard to take. I've always showered my grandchildren with lovely presents and things at Christmas. This Christmas is not going to happen. I'm on medication now. I'm on medication that, as far as I'm concerned, only people that are schizophrenic or whatever need to be on, but I'm on that now because I can't cope. When you look at the indices of deprivation, Burnley tends to find itself at the top of all those tables that you don't want to find yourself at the top of. Since 2013-14, almost uh, £5 million pounds worth of uh, funding that's been taken away from Burnley. We've got to a position now where it's difficult to decide where it is those savings will uh, come from. I, I don't think it's right that um, uh, charities, the, the voluntary sector, the community sector, faith sector are having to do some of the things that they are doing. One of the richest countries in the world, 2022, should not be in this situation. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. We are installing a brand new boiler, OK? Um, because of the circumstances of I've only been on 1,050 income per month between the two of them. I don't want them going into debt. So we are installing the boiler for them for free. Being without a boiler over the Christmas period would have been extremely cold. And, well, it looks like we're going to be in a position to be warm now. He's an absolute angel. Absolute angel. The other day I went to talk to a lady and I just hugged her, and, and the moment I hugged her, she cried, I cried, we, we cried together, and it's like, this could be my mum. How would I feel if someone rang me up and said, my mum was in hospital, or my mum had tried to kill herself, because she couldn't put food on the table, or she couldn't afford the electric and the gas and the bills. How would I feel if that happened? How would you feel? 